Hi guys, it is a gloomy Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in uh, Garfield, Texas here on this cloudy gray Monday morning, March 16th, 2020. But we're going to go all the way across the pond to hopefully sunny Spain where I have the good fortune that we actually have a, uh, a tribes member who lives in Spain. And we're going to bring on Christina, who has now officially been on lockdown, I guess, for 24 hours. And so since the biggest story in the United States is what lockdown or quarantine is going to look like here, I thought it would be a good idea to check in with Christina to find out what it looks like there. So, Christina, come on and say hi to the folks, and then we'll dive right into this conversation. Hi, how are you, everyone? Good all, to be here. All right, so just before we dive into what's going on in your life today, just give us a brief bio on you, uh, how you made the decision to get out, how and why uh, you made the decision and when to get out of the United States over to Spain to be an expat. What was that all about? Um, well, so uh, as you could probably hear from my voice, I'm, I'm living in Spain, but I'm originally from the United States. I uh, lived in New Jersey pretty much my whole life. And I had... Um, for 17 years, and not unlike you, the, the six, a six-figure corporate job in accounting and uh, financial analysis for large corporations in the United States. And uh, after 17 years, I just had had enough for, for many, many reasons, which would take so long to describe here. And I just wanted to try something different. I, I, I just I didn't want to spend any more time as part of the system anymore. And I decided to pack up and move to Spain. How, why did you choose Spain? I'm sorry? Why did you choose Spain with all the choices um, about Well, I, I wanted to go somewhere in Europe, and this is, this is, these decisions were made before I came to the full understanding of the predict, of predicament we're in. Before coronavirus, I'm, I'm talking about just understanding that we're fucked. I made these decisions. Now, I just told you, no, no F-bombs, and look at you, you made it Two minutes and 43 seconds. Anyway, uh, we're <laughs> anyway, uh, keep, keep going. Let's around. just try not to drop the, uh, the F-bombs. This is going on Collapse Chronicles, too. So anyway, so you, you know that you, you just realized that things were not looking good in our future. Let's put it that way. Well, I, I realized these things after I had made the decision to move here. Um, uh, so, so the reason why I picked Spain was I had wanted to come to Europe. I, you know, I thought that Europe was this progressive place, you know, and uh, at least compared to the United States, you know, with its free healthcare and. Uh, it's, uh, you know, most people here do not deny climate change. Everybody wants to fight climate change, although nobody, nobody realizes how bad it is. But, you know, again, like I just thought that Europe was just this progressive place compared to the United States. And so I wanted to be here. Also, my mother's originally from Germany, so I've been um, coming to Europe uh, for uh, uh, most of my life, and so I, again, you know, some I just wanted to be someplace in Europe, but I wanted to be someplace warm. So that was Spain, and also the weed is uh, fairly easy to get here. So that was another reason. But good cost of living, you know, good lifestyle. They're very laid back here. They don't take themselves very seriously. So uh, yeah. So that's five years you've been an ex expat over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not not counting this latest weird turn of events the past month. So you're planning to stay there, or do you rec do you recommend Spain to other people looking for a place to bail to? I don't know. I mean, I I, I think I'm going to stay here because I, I don't really know where else to go. Is the United States going to be any better when? You know, you know, uh, uh, the S word hits the fan. Uh, um, I don't know. Um, I think every place is kind of going to have its own problems in some way or another. So, 
Would I recommend people to come here? I, I don't know. I mean, in, in Europe, I think Spain is going to be, in terms of the climate, you know, moving aside from the coronavirus, in terms of the climate, I think Spain is going to be one of the harder hit countries because yeah. it's it's already dry. Uh, it's if you if you uh, there's an area called Almeria in Spain. It's, it, they, they do huge production for uh, uh, fruits and vegetables for all of Europe. They grow all the uh, fruits and vegetables for Europe. And these, um, these uh, I don't know what I would like greenhouses that you could actually see from space. <laughs> and all these, and these things are sucking up water like yeah. you wouldn't believe in yeah. a place that's already... Actually, Almeria is, one of, is the only place in Europe that's a borderline desert as it is. And they have all, and they're growing all these fruits and vegetables there for all of Europe. So, I mean, the country is uh, desertifying and, uh, or in the middle of desertification. And there are some reports saying that it will become completely uninhabitable by the end of the century, but I think it will be much sooner than that, as with everything else. So where do you uh, live? I forgot to ask you, where in Spain? Do you live in the city, a small town? Where do you live? I live in a small town just outside of a big city. I live just outside of Malaga, which is Spain's, I think it's either the fifth or sixth largest city now. I'm, I'm not really sure. It's about 600,000 people. And I live in a little town just outside of Malaga. So pretty much I live in Malaga. Okay, so let's uh, take our jump into the, the madness going, going around this planet. So... Uh, First, let, let, let me just ask you, what, what is your general opinion of the coronavirus? Is it being overhyped, or do you think, are, are you taking it very, I, I mean, from, just from a human health perspective and about the chance of you personally getting it, are you, do you think it's being overhyped, or is it something that I, am, that I personally am treating too lightly? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want to catch it. I, 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 I've resigned myself. Well, if I get it, I get it. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm, you know, going to try not to, but if, and I don't want to because I don't like to be sick, but it sounds like, or from, from what it seems so far, is that the, the death rate is, just what, something like 3 or 4%, so chances are, if I do get it, I, I don't think I'll die or anything, but... I'm, just, I'm concerned about all the rippling effects of this, you know, especially in a country like Spain, which doesn't is not on the best financial footing to begin with. Um, they were hit really hard in the 2008 crisis. I think at some point they had like 25 percent unemployment at the maximum. I, I don't know what they're down to now. Maybe 15 percent. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. So they're just they're just barely, you know, getting back on their feet from 2008. And then to have this, you know, and have to divert all these funds that they need so badly for other things to this, to fighting this, and they rely, they, Spain, I mean, I don't, I don't care for tourism, but unfortunately Spain relies heavily on tourism, very heavily on tourism, and so I think that's going to be devastating if this continues, which they're saying two weeks right now, but I, I can't imagine it's going to stop at two weeks. I yeah. don't think it'd have to go on a little longer than that. So yeah, the tourism, know, the tourism the industry is, is, yeah. No, again, it's just all the, the, it's just, you know, our system is held together by all these thin little strings, and they're so brittle, and the strings crisscross each other, so when one breaks, the whole thing just yeah. starts to come apart. We, we are seeing that. So let's actually, what the, the, the big... Uh, rumor mongering and the big fear and whatnot going on this week uh, or surrounding this coronavirus is this whole notion there's two words being floated around lockdown and quarantine they're, they're, I guess the, the two terms are almost being used interchangeably so I thought we should definitely go talk to someone who's actually being locked down so define to the best of your ability the, the, the definition of lockdown and or quarantine and how it's playing out uh, in, in your life personally. Let's get your personal story and the larger ripple effect around the country. So this just started yesterday, is that? It's, you're only 24 hours yes. into it? Yes, well they announced the measures on, I think it was Monday, I mean, sorry, uh, 
Friday night, Friday night or Saturday, I can't remember now, but it, it started yesterday, and this morning it came into a full effect, to the, like really, uh, uh, like yesterday was, I guess, one of the soft start, and today was the official, official start. So uh, define and, and lockdown. 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 Define the term lockdown, at least uh, in Spain. So our freedom of movement has been severely restricted, is what it means. We cannot leave our houses, except with some, with some exceptions, to go to the grocery store, to go to the pharmacy, to go to the bank, to go to the health, health center, you know, or, or a doctor. And I believe in certain essential jobs. I don't know what the definition of an essential job is, but I do know that some people can go to that. And uh, if you do go out, you will be stopped by police. I believe in some places even the army has been deployed, but at a minimum by police, and they will ask you where you're going and uh, to produce ID. You could also go out one person at a time, um, and, and again, when they when they ask you for ID and ask you where you're going, you must tell them. If, and if they believe that you're, if, if you don't tell them or you don't give them your ID, you don't cooperate, you could be fined. I believe it's between 300 euros up to like 16, I can't remember the exact amount, up to 16,000 or something like that, and um, a year, up to a year in jail is possible. Oh, you can, you can also walk your dog if you, uh, as uh, the other thing you can do. Oh, you can walk your dog, huh? Yes, but I'm it's only, only one person and one dog? at a time, you can't go in a group, and you can only just, you know, you have to go out, let the dog do its business, and go back. You can't go out for a stroll to walk the dog. Okay. Uh... You can't walk your pangolin, however, I bet. Uh, <laughs> anyway, no more, no more pangolin jokes. Uh, so you mentioned grocery stores and pharmacies. Is that pretty much what and you anyone, understand? Um, anything that, that sells uh, uh, food of some sort, aside from a restaurant. Uh, so uh, bakeries butchers, fruit stands. Here, here where I live, um, because there's so much uh, agriculture uh, and so much uh, fruit and vegetable uh, production, uh, there's many, many, many fruit and vegetable stands, and I believe most of them, uh, or at least some, are, are open. You can go to them as well. So, but, but you haven't been to the grocery store in the last 24 hours. Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I do know somebody, and I also have been following some of the, the grocery store websites. And from what I understand, um, and I saw pictures on the news, they have put actually on the on the, the the street or the the sidewalk in front of the grocery store, they have put tape one meter apart to show people how far they have to stay from each other. I believe there's somebody who is in the door, you know, uh, who allows you to come in, who tells you know next because you can only have a certain amount of people in the store at one time. Uh, most grocery stores are asking you to pay with credit cards only and not uh, cash. Oh, really? And if in the event that they do, you have to leave the cash in a plate and then they'll just give you the cash that way. So um, I haven't been yet, but from what I understand, if you do go, uh, uh, there's a lot of restrictions and uh, uh, measurements put in place to try and keep people as far away from each other as possible. Oh, the cash thing is because of the germs on the money? Yes. Oh. And with the, with, the, with the credit card, you know, they have machines yeah, and you yeah. your credit, nobody has to touch anything. Yeah, I get it. Well, or, uh, well, some conspiracy theorists <clears throat> might, might say there's something bigger behind that, but we're not going to get down that road on this, uh, uh, on this show. Uh, so, essential jobs. Have you seen a list of what defines no. an essential job? No, I haven't. Um, from what I understand and from what I've seen, there's cleaners out and people who have uh, jobs maintaining the town, police. As far as I know, things like, uh, for instance, the office uh, for immigration is closed because I know some people, some other expats who needed to go there and that's closed. Um, I believe the post office is open from what I understand. Yeah, it should be. There yeah. are some restaurants actually that are allowing deliveries on limited basis, but other than that, you know, I have not seen like a full comprehensive list of what an essential job is. My understanding is this morning though in Madrid and Barcelona, 
I don't know if maybe it's a very loose definition of the essential jobs because my understanding is the the, the, the subways, the metros were completely packed this morning with people trying to get to their jobs in Madrid and Barcelona. So I really don't know what. what uh, yeah, that, yeah, see, this obviously now, <clears throat> as you may or may not know, I, I am trying to uh, sell a house. So my biggest fear of all, uh, it, it, in a lockdown, uh, can a, is a real estate agent an essential job? Are, would, are, are real estate agents allowed to show property in Spain, to your knowledge? No, because, because you, uh, I mean, you can't leave your house to begin with. So no, that's not a not an essential job. To no. your honor, now that the clothing would... stores were all closed, you know, and nothing, you know, it, unless it sells food, uh, pretty much every commercial establishment is closed. So, so you're suggesting, uh, you know, I, I just used the real estate example since I was a former realtor. What you have just suggested, Christina, is that the entire real estate industry in the country of Spain is now shut down. As far as I know, yes, yes. But you, un you understand that uh, that means death to the uh, Spanish economy. And if they shut down the real estate industry in the United States of America over this, it, will, it really will make what happened in 2008 look like a bad hair day. It, it will. It will. I, I'm really, I'm really con, um, concerned about again, not so much the virus, but the the in, uh, economic and rippling effects. And yes, that'll be devastating to the real estate, especially since actually where I live, a lot of the real estate is sold to foreigners, yeah. to people from other parts of Europe. A lot of people, a lot of Br British, French, Germans have their vacation homes here or some of them retire here it's also very uh, popular for retirement and if they can't come here because the, the flights are restricted then even if they could show homes they wouldn't have many clients probably anyway uh, so it's going to have devastating effects uh, well between but particularly with Spain with, with with the tourism as you mentioned uh, that could bring Spain to its knees we're not even talking about the real estate now obviously here I, I don't know what the real estate uh, business in the United States is there it's surely in the trillions of dollars it, it's you know it's one of the major underpinning industries in, in, in the US and if that happens here we are as you mentioned uh before f-bombed so anyway you mentioned uh flights so obviously this is another major part of what what people here in the u.s are thinking about flights in and out of spain there, there, there's four there, there's four major groups well there, there, first there's people trying to get into spain people trying to get out of spain and then you can break that down into Spanish nationals and uh, various, uh, you know, people who are not Spanish nationals. So let's hit it on the four, the four ways that you understand it. Okay, let's start getting into Spain today. Are there flights even coming into Spain? And uh, that means that then that would be Spanish nationals trying to get home and tourists trying to, tourist and business people trying to come in for other reasons. How do you understand what's happening with flights into Spain today? There are flights coming in, but as you say, it's mostly just either Spanish nationals trying to get home. And of course, when you come in, you have to prove that you live here or or expats who have an, a habitual home here which again they would have to prove i have or not I, I don't know how i don't know what the exact restriction is because i have heard there are still some flights coming in from other countries for no particular you know that 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 aren't uh just spanish nationals but i i really don't know if it's just because they haven't gone around to canceling them yet uh but as far as I know, uh, flights in are restricted, with the exception of uh, uh, you know Spanish nationals getting home and people who live here habitually. 
Okay, and so let's flip the coin on trying to get out of Spain in, in an airplane. Uh, what, what is that looking like? Now, I'm assuming that Spanish nationals are, are completely screwed. I, I mean, uh, no, number one, are they being let out? And number two, would any country on the receiving end let them in? What are, what do you know or what's your opinion of, of the Spanish nationals well, getting out? Well, there are out? definitely some countries that are not letting Spanish nationals, and I honestly, I cannot, or not, not necessarily Spanish nationals, but people who have been in Spain for a particular amount of time uh, are not being let in. Or they're being let in, they have to go through a 14-day quarantine first, or they're just not doing flights anymore. I, I think it's a mixed bag from what I understand. But um, I understand that also that um, airlines are consolidating flights. So there are some airlines that, you know, might have had from London, there might have been five flights a day to Malaga. Now there's just one instead, and mostly just to take people home. So how about non Spanish? So so people who are not Spanish nationals who are trying oh, yeah, to so get yes, the hell if out. If you're not Spanish, yes, I'm sorry. If you're not Spanish, then yes, you can you can definitely leave the country. You can get home. It just is, it's going to be a little harder because the they've been consolidating flights, so you might have to wait a few days or. You might have to connect or something like that, but you can definitely, if you're not a Spanish national, uh, you can definitely leave the country. It's just not, it's just going to be a little, a little harder to do, but you can, yes. Well, and then, then of course, which has nothing to do with Spain, I guess, is what you're going to face on, in your own country when you, quote, get home. And uh, I have not exactly. even... I have not even looked at the pictures of the U.S. You know, there's 13 airports that will allow people flying from Spain to come into now. So have you heard this? Uh, anyone, I think you have a dark, cysted, twisted sense of ironic humor, am I correct? Okay, have you, have you heard this story, Christina? What's, what, what has happened now in the U.S. starting yesterday with this new only 13 airports are allowed to bring in people from from uh, from this list of countries. Uh, what they have done in an attempt to reduce the spread of the coronavirus is they have created 13 absolute stew pots of coronavirus transmission. Uh, going against every one of the recommendations they're telling us to do voluntarily, the United States government has forced thousands and thousands of people to be crammed together shoulder to sh I mean, people, the most likely people, you know, coming from all of these countries uh, with, with the highest rates of coronavirus infection are now being forced by the federal government to be crammed together, shoulder to shoulder, cheek to jowl for hours and hours and hours uh, at a time, so the 13 most likely place to get the 13 biggest hotspots in the United States of America as we're having this conversation are the 13 airports that the federal government has set up to control the spread of coronavirus. The, the federal government has, has become the number one most likely way to get a uh, corona to get a coronavirus infection is you can thank the U.S. federal government for it. So you have to appreciate that, don't you, Christina? Yes. <laughs> so. Well, wasn't that actually something also with the, the Diamond Princess too, where they decided to uh, uh, quarantine everybody on board, so a, a lot more people probably then would have yeah. wound up catching it. <laughs> yeah, well, that, well, that's what they've done now. Oh, well, oh well, no, you take that. You take that and multiply it 
by, by a hundredfold, there will be a lot more people getting, a hell of a lot more people getting coronavirus uh, today than would have gotten coronavirus if the uh, jackboots and the U.S. federal government had not come up with this brilliant plan. As I say, I haven't even turned on the news today. But anyway, so let's talk about getting getting out by car. Tell us, you know, what, what I... All of this talk about Spain and Italy and more and more about France, you do not hear the word Portugal uh, mentioned. It's like Portugal does not exist as a country. What is the news out of Portugal? Can you just get in your car and drive into Portugal or would that even uh, help? Do you, can you give us any news about getting in and out of Portugal? I don't know, honestly, because it's, you know, in Spain, it's funny uh, if you look at a, uh, when they do the weather forecast, for instance, on TV, the map always leaves Portugal out. Um, <laughs> since you can't leave your house to begin with, unless you have a good reason, you know, one of the, the reasons that you're allowed to, like, go into the store, I would think by default you can't go to Portugal anyway, unless you have some sort of an essential job that, you have to go there for so whether or not it's restricted i don't know but by default i would think you, you can't do it anyway because you can't draw it draw it unless you're going to the store yeah to... and i can't imagine uh, if you did drive to the border of portugal that the portuguese uh immigration is to say yeah come on in from spain and stay as long as you want uh, you're going to get turned back anyway, but I guess Portuguese citizens maybe can uh, at least at least get back home. Anyway, uh, well, we've been we're getting up on thirty minutes here. So, if you were knowing what you know over there in Spain, and I realize you're only twenty four hours into this. But uh, if you were not in Spain, but you were in, in Austin, Texas, and you were hearing all of these rumors that uh, what's happening in Spain is getting ready to happen, and possibly even today and probably at some point this week, what is your advice to, to Americans facing a potential lockdown over here, what would you recommend they do to get ready for this? Well, in the, the obvious stock, stock up. I actually started stocking up on food about two weeks before they announced anything because uh, my parents were the type that always, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best. And so I had already started doing that. So just make sure you have plenty of food things to do. What I uh, would think that uh, it's going to be really hard is the psychological toll of being locked up in your apartment. I, mean, I think something like 70% of Spaniards live in apartments. And so to be locked in your apartment with your kids, especially, I just, so I think probably the number one thing, aside, well, the number two thing, aside from preparing for your basic needs is to psychologically prepare yourself Make sure you have things to do and, you know, uh, 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 keep your mind occupied and because it's going to get rough uh, after a while, psychologically. Well, with that, uh, we do wish you, we do wish you luck and uh, at least you have the folks here on YouTube to, uh, event to and if, if, if any you know really something earth-shaking happens that we didn't talk about here today obviously uh, I I want you to you know to contact me immediately so we can bring you back on if uh, if something really uh, out of 1984 rears up its head that that you didn't see coming by all means, uh, get back in touch with me. So stick around for... Will. What's that? I, I definitely will get in touch with you, and I, I kind of do feel like there will be a 1984 thing. I, I don't know what, but uh, I, I don't... Uh, the, the rippling effects of this, I think, will be bad. I expect we will uh, be hearing from you some time uh this week stick around for just a minute after we uh wrap up but guys anyway i really uh, 
Uh, let's give Christina a big thank you for coming uh, here to talk to us. And if you enjoyed what Christina had to tell you, please thumb this video up. If you did not like, like what Christina said, then please uh, spend a few seconds to thumb it down. But by all means, subscribe to this channel while you're over here. And Christina, good luck to you and keep up the good fight. Thanks. Bye, guys.